Welcome back to News at Prime. We're still talking tonight about the ANC's January 8th statement delivered by the party's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, who today said the party is committed to fighting corruption and will ensure that as it continues to rebuild, it sets itself up as an organization that is trusted and respected by the people it serves in this country. Let's talk more about the January 8th statement. Bring in political analyst Professor Siposiebe. Professor Siebe, very good evening to you. So the president of the ANC in speaking today said that the ANC lives and it leads. Did you get that sense today? Well, it's not so much about uh, what the ANC says. It's more about what the electorate are saying. We just emerged from uh, grueling elections at the local level. And the people of this country have actually spoken. If the ANC leads, it would have gotten more than 50%, but it didn't. If the ANC leads, it would have been in control of the major metros in this country. It does not. So this is uh, the aspirations of the president, but the truth of the matter is the people have actually spoken and the people have said the ANC does not lead. But also, we must understand that this is also a party that uh, is also driven by internal divisions. So when you have a party that is not united, it is difficult for that party to lead. But uh, that it lives, it still lives. But uh, there are people who are beginning to say what we are seeing is what has been seen in many of the liberation movements, that when they start losing, the trajectory seems to be going down instead of uh, the parties being able to rebuild themselves. Could then this window between now and 2024, the general election, could the ANC still change the minds of people who had become despondent and to a degree lost confidence in an organization that many would have supported from the first democratic election? Well, one must understand that uh, there's also a nature of democracy. Once people stay long in power, people become complacent, those who are the incumbent. But at the same time, people also get to a stage where they're saying, can we try something better? So it will depend to how the parties that have managed to dislodge the ANC from the position it held, how they perform. If, for instance, metros that are run by the DA perform better, then it is possible for the ANC to take advantage and exploit the weaknesses. Mm. But if those parties do well, uh, take an example of um, the Western Cape, the ANC started losing with uh, the city. And the, when the DA got in there, it performed well in terms of running the city. And then it moved to the province. And as we speak, the province, Western Cape, is a serious appeal for the ANC. So the notion of assuming that you can easily get back has been shown to be not so easy for parties that have been in power. I want to go back to the internal dynamics which you referenced, the issue of organizational renewal and rebuilding. This is a conference year for the ANC. How much do you think that goal, along with this, this plea and the emphasis for a membership that is disciplined, is going to be tested? Well, I think uh, the real test of discipline, and the president talked about the discipline, that the uh, people, when they're ill-disciplined, it's very important that the ANC is seen to act very swiftly and uh, decisively, especially given the tendency where when you have moments of ill-discipline, members of the ANC simply look, look as scans. But we've seen that element of ill-discipline today. You had the premier of uh, Imbubu beginning to give an impression that the ANC has already started the notion of uh, uh, elections campaign for the president of the ANC and started the, in a, a wrong platform because uh, today's platform is about the ANC, it's not about individuals. So you had the, the, the chairperson of the Mbobo even himself admitting that I may be jumping the gun, but almost like I don't give a damn, uh, we are going to take this position. Let and me imagine if other... Prof, other just on the point members, you're making, I want to ask you something else. You say it was the chairperson of the ANC in Limpopo who stepped out of line, essentially talking about contestation before the nomination process has begun. I wonder when leaders at that level are themselves stepping out of line, so to speak, what does that then mean for the conduct of people at branch level? In a week where we've heard that the branches are dysfunctional, there is ill discipline there as well. That's exactly the point that uh, people are already raising on the ground. That here you have... Uh, 
a chairperson of a province uh, misbehaving in public and also acknowledging that I know I'm jumping the gun. Then you have other speakers who come in who could have said that, uh, well, we understand that the uh, comrades wishes, but uh, in terms of our processes, this is a form of ill discipline. And you correct the person there, but when you keep quiet, it may be that you keep quiet because it seems to be to your advantage. Imagine if he had said somebody else should lead. It would have created chaos. So here you have a person who is very senior, misbehaving, and there's silence. So the point that you're raising is that you're also sending a wrong message to the people on the ground. And already some provinces were already quarreling about that type of behavior. This is not the way in which you build discipline and you build unity. You build unity by making sure that people behave in the manner that they should, which is the discipline and also guided by the ANC and the ANC. And the, ANC. the statement of the ANC was today was all about the ANC and its achievement or lack of achievement in the last year. But uh, that being said, Stan Matabata's remarks, which I think we can actually bring up now, Prof, and then I'll ask you another con uh, question after that. Let's see if we can listen to Stanley Matabata, the chairperson of the ANC, speaking at that January 8th uh, event today, where he basically endorsed Saul Ramaphosa for a second term as president. All the regions which have, host, which have hosted their regional conferences have spoken loudly to say that they embraced, sorry, they embraced the renewal path that our movement has embarked upon. Members of the ANC in this province are saying that there is no way or no any other route for the ANC except the renewal path with the, which the previous conferences mandated us to embark upon. The branches of the African National Congress in those conferences have also expressed their support for the leadership of our current president, President Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa. All of them without exception. And Professor Sebe, Stan Matabata's remarks there basically publicly endorsing a leader for re-election is not an unusual thing in the ANC, even though the party always says officially one should not do that outside of the nomination process beginning. But it usually also indicates that there are already behind the scenes movements for specific candidates. For the presidency itself, who is the alternative to Ramaphosa at the moment? Well, I think uh, what is important is that the party cannot talk about discipline and allow people to be ill-disciplined. It may be that uh, the, there are processes underneath that are taking place. Then it's up to the ANC to simply say the nomination, nomination process has started. But when you have people going out of line, it does not over well for the notion of discipline. You cannot talk about that in that way. Suppose other members, there is also another province that has already taken a position that is different. What it will do, it will undermine the very notion of unity. But when you deal with processes, even when people differ, they'll be differing within the uh, discipline framework that the party has actually put on the table. This is why earlier, Gwede uh, Mantashu has asked the very same question, and he did indicate that the question is out of order, out of order because the ANC has not pronounced on the nomination process. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there are other people who also felt that, uh, and if you listen to Matabate, they, they, there was no applause except for maybe his group that had caucused around this issue. But members looked at it and they were very surprised at how dare you say this when we're supposed to be dealing with the party as a whole than the individual. Mm -hmm. And Ramaphosa himself, when he spoke, he made sure that he steers away from that. And later when he was asked, he also steered away from that question because he understands that it is a form of ill discipline. So the point that you raised earlier, that when leaders at that level misbehave and show a lack of discipline, because discipline is also about patience. Even if you know that a person has particular support, you wait until the moment. That's what discipline is all about. And here you see a form of ill discipline. And the president said, when there's ill discipline, we must deal with it immediately and decisively. And that did not occur. One thing that the president of the ANC also said today was that the renewal project is being assailed at various levels by acts of institutional 
and social disruption, which he says united in South Africa will be defeated. And I wonder if the defeat of those attempts then lies more in broader society than ANC structures and its leadership uh, itself. Well, the people have actually spoken. They are actually saying whatever the ANC has been trying to do in the last four years, they say we're not impressed. And secondly, the people are beginning to also think about uh, governance outside the ANC. It is not an accident that the Progressively, you have new players who are going into government. Initially, it started with the DA. Then you started having independent uh, people assuming positions in governance of this country. So there is a, a sense where people are saying the AC does not lead, and the election outcome suggests that. But we also know that this is also a party that uh, is unable to even to pay its own workers. I was, uh, it was uh, ironic to hear the, uh, the leader of COSATU saying the workers are saying they need to be paid on time. And yet uh, she could not say, but Mr. President, your party is not even paying our comrades. And this is a, a problem. So they, when there is a talk on the podium, there needs to be consistency. And people should actually be hearing what they're saying and then be asking that, am I behaving the same way that I'm suggesting others to behave? And here COSATU, has not said anything about the, the workers who have been unpaid in the ANC. It was only the president that when he was in a one-to-one -one session that he acknowledged that that is actually a problem. Thank you very much, Professor Siposepe, political analyst. Good to speak to you, sir. Thank you.